everyone and welcome to this week's Ask IB. I've got a couple questions here in front of me and I'm going to go ahead and do my best to answer them. So we'll start with the first one. This question comes from Michelle Kirkland and she asks, how can I take the emotional pain, grief and hurt and turn this energy into something that's powerful and pours out from the soul? How to do this and do it with ease that allows some freedom and relief. So I think that ultimately we all seek to release emotion in our work and to express emotion and sometimes that doesn't come quite as easily as you think it should and um, I think that this is a wonderful place where intuitive art can help. I think there's something powerful about going up to a blank canvas and maybe choosing two colors or black and white and just starting to make marks and seeing what emotions come up. Um, I often will do this, I'll play music, I'll light my candles, and I'll kind of set the intention that I'm gonna let whatever needs to come out, come out, with no uh, perceived outcome. And I think this, you know, you'll find that you're gonna be tight at first, and you're gonna be, you know, rigid, but if you keep moving forward, and you keep moving your body and your hands, and you're connecting with the paper and the paint, I think that's when stuff starts to kind of move in your body um, energetically and emotionally. Um, so try, you know, putting up a big piece of paper and putting the music on and making sure you're not going to be interrupted and choose simple materials. A lot of times my emotional work starts with just charcoal and water. Simple, simple materials no fluff, um, a piece of paper or a canvas or a wood board or whatever, and I just start going at, at it with, uh, with movement. I might have a few images around me that have caught my attention from Pinterest or a face that I saw in a magazine that uh, brings out something in me. And sometimes I don't have anything in front of me at all, and I'm just making shapes and I'm just making um, movement and creating marks. And I think typically, if you can stay in that place, things will start to come up. And you may start to see things form in your work. Um, I think it's really critical if you want to be expressive in your work and you really want to be emotive, is that you need to be very present. And you need to kind of turn off that left brain. You need to turn off the brain that's telling you, no, you don't know what you're doing that doesn't look right, blah, 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 blah. We all know this inner critic brain. And you have to really embrace the mess. You have to embrace what might come out that isn't planned, that might look ugly, that might not look um, graceful or elegant. Maybe it's going to be scratchy and angry. Maybe that's what you need to release. So I think it's about realizing that art doesn't always have to be pretty and that it is really uh, such a personal thing for each person. And at the end of the day, you don't have to show anyone what you made. You know, maybe you just need to release some stuff for you. And that's enough. You don't need anyone to validate it. Um, it's always nice, of course, to get validation from the things we create, but I mean, there are plenty of things that I don't post. There are art journal pages that are too personal for me to share, that are, um, that are messy and angry and have things in them that are, are raw. And then other times, you know, you, do, you wanna share those things because you reached a place where you feel impacted by it and you wanna share it with others. So I think, Michelle, I think the key thing is, is being present, being really open when you're creating um, and staying really in the moment and giving yourself permission to get messy and angry and attack the page a little bit and allow these emotions to come out. I think music is such a great gateway for us to kind of quiet the left brain and allow these things to come up. So try it at home and see what comes up for you. Again, stay simple with your materials and, and give yourself permission, again, to just let loose, you know, and let it be for you. Let it be for your journey and for your expression and, and, and honor that, that, that part of, of what you're going through. So that's how I often will get my emotional work out. That's just kind of my process. 
and it's not always easy. I mean, I have definitely started crying when I'm creating, or I've gotten really angry, you know, and um, that's part of it too. So I think being really accepting of your emotions is really key as well. As things come up, don't push them away. Don't don't try and rationalize them. If you want to feel angry, feel angry. If you want to feel jealous or, um, you know, if you want to feel sad, if you want to feel rage or regret or whatever you might need to feel, don't question it. Don't um, judge your feelings because if you start shaming yourself for feeling a certain way, well, you know, it's just not productive and it's not going to help you release that emotion. I think the more honest we are about our emotions and the more um, compassionate we are towards ourselves, the, the quicker those things can just get out of us and we can move on. But if we keep telling ourselves, oh, we shouldn't feel that way, I shouldn't be that angry, I shouldn't feel like this, I shouldn't, you know, whatever. Let all that go, embrace your emotions and let them come out. Okay, another question comes from Catherine Valenti and she says, is there anything I should know that will make me a better portrait artist? How do you capture the person and not just the likeness? Yeah, um, great question, Catherine. I think obviously, you know, practice, practice, practice. You know, I'm gonna say that. Um, you know, drawing people every day. Uh, I think if you are really wanting to be a portrait artist, I think working for models, if you can, even if it's your family member or a friend who's willing to sit for you, for half an hour I think is incredibly powerful because you're in their presence, you're in their energy, and so you're gonna pick up more than just their likeness and it usually will come out in their eyes or in their expression or you know something in their features that will, will really be unique to them. I think sometimes working from a photograph it can be a little bit tricky and we can flatten and kind of generalize certain things um, if you do have to work from photographs, which I often do, I think the really important thing is to just pay super, super attention to the subtleties of the face. It's so easy for our brains to fill in the blanks when we stop observing our portrait study, when we stop observing our, um, our subject. We can be like, oh, I know a nose goes like this, and so all of a sudden all your noses look the same, and you're like, well, it doesn't really make that person look very unique. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think it's really about it's really ob it's really all about observation, and I also think that sometimes the the portraits that I like the best um, and that are the most unique often exaggerate slightly one of the features, whether it's the lips or the nose or the intensity of the eyes or the angle of the neck or you know the the, the shallowness of the chin or the strength of the jaw. I think that it's interesting to find uh, a really strong attribute um, of your subject's face and slightly push it, not to the point where it's cartoonish or a caricature, but uh, somehow bring emphasis to it. I think that can make for a really unique um, portrait where you're not just putting down what's in front of you, but you're, you're kind of embracing something about that face that makes it unique. So that's something that I would recommend um, and of course, just keep practicing. I mean, that's the best thing you can do. And it really depends on where you want to take your portraiture. Do you want your portraiture to be more expressive or do you want it to be hyper realism or somewhere in between? And so, you know, there's a lot of wiggle room there. Um, obviously hyper realism, you're wanting to get every single pore exactly the same as what you're looking at or exactly the same as your photograph. Uh, in expressionism, obviously, you can abstract and push things and distort things a little bit in order to evoke more emotion. So I think it's important to define what you want from your portraiture too and study the artists that you like. Uh, you know, look at different portrait artists and, and create a Pinterest board or um, if, you don't, if you're not on Pinterest, create a little magazine file and print stuff out and study why you like that artist. What are they doing in their portraits that you would like to incorporate in your portraits? And I think we can learn so much from studying other artists. So those would be my tips for improving your portraiture and capturing more than just uh, the likeness of a person. And this is another question from Catherine Valenti and it was next on the list so I thought I'd go ahead and address it. 
Uh, she says, what's the best way to use pastels? Do I put all the colors down first, then blend, or do I blend each color separate? So when I'm working with pastels, and I'm not an expert in pastels, I love them and I have had success with them, but I'm not you know, a trained pastel artist. I haven't done it for years and years. But what works for me is I like to work in layers. So if I'm starting out with my portrait, obviously I'll sketch it out, um, and then I'll add in my darks. And so I'll tend to blend my darks first and kind of get that established. So I know where my darks are, I start to create form, and then I start adding you know, the next level up and then the next and the next. So I would say blend each layer together. Uh, I don't do like, uh, let's say I'm using raw umber for the cheekbone and I'm getting a shadow in there. I wouldn't put that down and then I'd use it somewhere else and then I'd use it somewhere else and then blend all the raw umber and then move to another dark. I'd put all the darks down, blend them, and then move to the next uh, layer of value, if that makes sense. So. So yeah, I think blending the colors together creates a lot uh, smoother sort of transitions so you don't get such a patchiness going. And um, I really, really recommend using high quality pastels. If you use um, the inexpensive brands, it's fine and it's fun, but you're not going to get the beautiful luminescent kind of glow um, that pastels can deliver. So I use the Senlier uh, brand. But there's several great brands, and I, they're a little bit of investment, but if you're really wanting to work with, with pastel, it's worth it. So that's my answer to that one, Catherine. And I'll, I'll throw in another one since this has uh, been a shorter Ask Ivy. And this is and from J.A. Berg. Ivy, do you have a favorite substrate to work on, and a least favorite, and why? So I love working on wood panels. I would say is my first favorite. I love uh, how tough they are and how rigid and how smooth they are. I do a lot of collage and mixed media, as you guys know, and I do like how they hold up to that. Now that being said, I would say my second favorite is stretch canvas. I love working on canvas. Um, it feels very traditional to me, very classical, and I like that. I love how big you can get them, and they're still not, you know, if you get in those big sizes with the wood boards, they're very heavy, and you can get really large sizes of the stretch canvas, and obviously they're still uh, pretty, pretty reasonable with their weight. So my least favorite, hmm, my least favorite, I don't know if I have a least favorite, I guess it would be... canvas board, although I use canvas board a lot because it's inexpensive and it's kind of fun and it's easy to ship. I don't know if I have a least favorite. I guess maybe, no. I mean, I don't use a lot of watercolor paper, uh, although I like working on watercolor paper. So you know what? I don't think I have a least favorite. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I guess maybe like cheap sketch paper sometimes frustrates me because uh, I often want to add water and I want to add things to it and it doesn't hold up. It gets all wrinkly and kind of gets messed up. So yeah, I don't really have a least favorite, <laughs> not really. Uh, but I would say, yeah, for sure. I love the wood boards, the wood cradled boards and the stretch canvas are my favorite. Okay. So thank you so much for your questions. Keep them coming. I'm going to keep making these videos and hopefully be helping you guys out. I hope you're enjoying them and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.